Hello everybody, it's Peter, Peter with an I, S-T-A-W-A-R-T. And welcome to segment 46 of... I don't know, the Dark Tower, I guess? I guess we lost him, said the intern, hunching over and resting his hands on his knees. The security guard hooted. True, they lost him. But he wouldn't be going back empty-handed. He would go back and dispel the rumors and put an end to all the superstitious folklore. When he turned, the intern saw the guard's expression go flat. Despite his physical exertion, he had sucked in air and quit breathing. The intern followed his focus of vision. There, standing behind them, was what he thought was a woman. She had a pasty white face, which seemed to glow under the street lamp. Her hair was a black, tangled mess, and the expression on her face was a twisted, hateful smile that exposed a few chipped and crooked teeth. The sight of her was horrifying. Then she did something tenfold more scary. Something that would scar both of them forever. She would do what she did to the bus driver, which caused him to screech away and quit his job. She flashed him. It wasn't what most people would assume. This was a different kind of flashing. This kind of flashing was demonic. She lifted her hand, clutched her hair, and pulled, exposing the red flesh of her scalp that was once attached to her skull. Her skull, which had been sawed open so long ago, had been stapled back in place. She lifted her head back, and out of her mouth came a screech that ripped through the night. The security guard became weak. The shooting pain as he fell to his knee onto a sharp rock on the asphalt only registered in his mind as a cold feeling. So very cold. The intern tried to form words. He couldn't take his eyes off what was going on before him, but he needed to ask the question. Say, is this normal? She started approaching him with a twisted, wincing grin on her face, with her hands raised like talons. The intern knew that if her horny, claw-like fingers landed on him, they wouldn't take mercy and wouldn't quit scraping no matter how much he pleaded. He knew he should stay to help the security guard, but things didn't turn out that way. As he turned to flee, he rolled his ankle before he could run at full speed. Weeks, even months later, he would suffer tremendous guilt and wonder why he couldn't stay to help the security guard. And in his dreams, he would reenact the same scenario and stick around. But the moment of extreme duress had caught him like a hook. Lights came on over the hill with a screech of tires. It was an ambulance. The security guard, who kneeled on the ground hyperventilating, could only force himself to swivel his neck to see it coming. The lights quickly grew lighter and closer. It was as if the rescue boat had come to pull him out of frigid waters. The lights came and passed as they raced down the road and around the corner. He wished he could have waved his arms, but the cold waters made his limbs lifeless, and the only indication he could give was the beacon his mind was calling out over the lonely, dark sea of icebergs. He had lost track of the hideous beast. She appeared to have left, but she could have been anywhere. She could be attacking the intern. She could be right behind him. He stayed motionless, 
an instinctual attempt to blend into the world as if he were a fence post, a rock, or a tree. The woman had left, but she would stay with both the security guard and the intern for a very long time. <laughs> Chapter 46 The ambulance driver stepped on the gas after a turn, and the security guards looked over their shoulders. They saw that the intern was running like he had seen a ghost, and their fellow security guard was on his knees holding his chest, and would have stopped to ask what was up, but they were in hot pursuit. As the ambulance rushed away from the scene of the incident, the driver strayed outside of the white line and came dangerously close to letting two of his tires fall off the abrupt edge of the asphalt. Watch out! yelled the passengers, making it difficult for him to hear anything through his cell phone. Hold on. The driver casually said to the person he was talking to, Can I call you back? he asked, awkwardly pinching the phone between his ear and shoulder temporarily holding the steering wheel with both hands. Oh, not again! He finally hung up and drove, rolling his eyes with frustration. What are you gonna do if we get in a wreck? Asked security guard Lewis. Call an ambulance? Suggested security guard Jordan. We have a phone right here. It rang again, and the driver answered it. The driving situation was serious. But this call was important. Hello? So what are you doing? Hey. What are you doing this Saturday? Nothing. So what are you doing? Nothing. So what are you doing? Just driving. So what are you doing? Just driving. So what are you doing? I don't know. You should stop by and see a movie sometime. We'll go to the Goodlist or Hanson thing. So what are you doing? Nothing. So what are you doing? Nothing. So what are you doing? Nothing. I haven't seen it for a while. Huh. Hey there, kitty cats. It's another full moon, and Wolfman Jack is going to bring you another set of five songs. If I'm lying, I'm dying. Nancy, do you really have to do your nails when you're driving? Shouted Joe over the volume of the radio. What? She asked. Do you really have to do your nails when you're driving? He repeated. Nancy didn't hear him, so she nodded and replied, Yeah, just to shut him up. It was difficult to hold the wheel, bottle of nail polish, the paintbrush cap, prevent drops from escaping, and make perfect strokes on her nails without getting any paint on her cuticles. On a long stretch, they saw flashing lights behind them. Is it the cops? Asked Joe. It was tough as hell. What did you say? yelled Nancy over the radio. Is it the cops? He repeated. The bops? She asked. The cops? He asked. Nancy turned on the radio for a second to hear him. Is it the cops? He asked. When she turned on the radio, she could hear their siren. No, that's only red and white lights on top. It's an ambulance. She said before turning the radio back up to full volume. Should we pull over and let them pass? Yelled Joe as the van drew closer at high speeds. What? She yelled. Should we pull over and let them pass us? He repeated over the music. Yeah. She yelled back. She had no idea what he said. Nancy knew it could be an ambulance speeding from the clinic to an emergency, or it could be the dentist coming after them with the first automobile he could find. Nancy slowed to let them pass, but she sure wasn't going to stop. There were three lanes. They could pass if they wanted to. 